So what I previously talked about is what is the amplitude and how to find the amplitude. And what I want to do is just try to make this a quick little video on, that was my cap, how does the amplitude affect our trigonometric graph? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to graph the sine function. And then I'm going to look at some alterations of amplitude and see how that's going to affect the graph. So let's graph the sine function. And I'm just going to graph an initial period. So we know that the parent graph of initial period goes up to 1 and then goes to down to negative 1. 1, 2. Uh, let's try to get a little bit better than that. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So for the sine graph, we know it goes up. Goes down. <laughs> I guess I was going back to my old point. Goes up, goes down, goes down, comes back up. So that is our initial period where we know it goes all the way to 2 pi, intersects at pi, has a maximum point of, of 1 at pi halves, and a minimum point at 3 pi halves. All right. So that is what we call y equals sine of x our parent graph. And actually, let's not put that there. Let's put that to the side. y equals sine of x. So that's our initial period, even though we know the graph continues in the positive negative direction. So remember, when talking about amplitude, the amplitude is going to be the absolute value of a, where it's the half distance between the maximum and the minimum point of a graph. So in this, point, in this graph, you can say the amplitude, the half distance, is going to produce a distance of 1. So let's use a little color coordination here. And let's take a look at a couple functions to see how they affect our graphs. So the first function I'll do is y equals uh, 2 sine of x. All right. So what you can see is now my amplitude is 2. That means my half distance between the maximum and minimum, rather than the mean 1, is going to be 2. So to graph this, I'm going to need to continue here my y-axis. And I could say 1. 2. So now my graph is going to go up to 2 and then down to negative 2. All right. So when graphing this, I'm still going to have the same critical points. It's still going to be a maximum of pi halves, a intercept at x, and a minimum point at 3 halves, and an intercept at 2 pi. But now my graph is going to go up, cross, go down, and then come back up. All right, so you can see how the amplitude has now just enlarged it when your absolute value of a is greater than 1. So now let's go and take a look at when we have an absolute value that's less than 1. And you know, I'm just, let's just do it, make it easy. But I want to show something which is going to be y equals a negative 1 half sine of x. Okay, so when looking at the negative 1 half, we now know that my amplitude, my a, is going to be the absolute value, which is going to be negative 1 half, which is equal to 1 half. So the negative is not going to affect my graph. That means my graph is now the maximum points that it's going to go up to. Since I'm starting at 0, the maximum point is going to be at 1 half and negative 1 half. All right, so the graph is still going to only range because that half distance is still 1 half. Now, since this is, has an, a, a reflection, that means now my graph is going to go negative, still going to cross at the same point, positive, and cross over. But you can notice now the distance between the maximum and the minimum point is still 1 half. So the negative affects the reflection of the graph. It does not affect the amplitude of the graph because we take the absolute value of the function. But it's just and very important that the amplitude, which is your a, your coefficient of your function, which multiplies by your co-function, does not affect the critical points, does not affect the period. It just affects the vertical stretch or compression of your function. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how the amplitude affects your trigonometric sine and cosine graph. Thanks.